Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to a new series for the channel, Settlement Survival. This is a new game that came out in mid-October, so I'm a little bit late on this one, but already I have received several recommendations from you guys saying I've got to try this game out because it is, in your words, a successor to Banished. And you all know me so well, I couldn't possibly resist. Banished is one of my all-time favorite indie games, a truly iconic survival city builder. Any game that can try to live up to that is going to be a huge win in my book. So I got the game, tried out the tutorials, set up a new game just to see what's going on, and yeah, sure enough, this game is heavily inspired by Banished, but it is so much more. There is a staggering amount of content in this game. It should be a lot of fun, if not a little overwhelming at times, and I am very happy to jump into a new game. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now we're going to be playing with standard mode, of course. There is also sandbox mode where all technology is automatically researched, and Easter Island, which is a challenging uh, scenario where wood grows extremely slowly. Not going to bother with that today, and it looks like three new scenarios will be added into the game at some point in the future. But for us, I think standard mode will do fine. We'll play on a large map at a normal difficulty. I will allow for disasters, and that should be good enough. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are. Now, first off, the map is pretty large and generous. There is going to be a lot of room for us to grow. But the first thing we have to do is choose our initial development location. There's a few things I'm looking for here. First off, being close to water is generally going to be a good thing for me. Gives access to some trade as well as to uh, some good fishing locations, which are represented down over here. I'd also like to be close-ish to a mountain, because that means we'll be able to set up some mines. And then there's other icons worth looking for. For example, really good pasture locations, better farming locations, new seeds we'll be able to gather for different types of crops, and so on. We want to be close to a bunch of these things, so I'm thinking we might set up kind of right over in this general vicinity. It's close to where the fish is going to be located, it's next to a mountain, and it's got a good fertile area for extra food from our first farms. So I think we'll set up right over here. And here we go. Now we do start off with a few different buildings. One's a simple storage shed, the other is a builder's cabin, where we will be able to assign people to work as builders. In fact, I can go ahead and assign another job right now, so we have four builders, and they'll go around constructing everything for me. Then we have the marketplace, which kind of functions like a town center in this game. Houses have to be built within range of the marketplace, and the people who work over here will gather up resources from storage yards, bring them to one central location, so that people will be able to get what they need nice and quick. So the marketplace is really going to be key for us. The first thing we probably want to do is set up some houses. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Where do I want to set up some houses? Great question. How about close to the marketplace? Uh, we could set up kind of like this. These yellow arrows represent the access point for the homes, and you want to leave a little bit of space in between buildings so you can have some roads. So let's go ahead and place down a couple of different houses off in this direction. Build up a nice, small, little neighborhood, kind of like so. Now, of course, it does cost resources to construct just about anything. In this case, it's going to cost me some lumber, some stone, and some iron ore in order to build these up. And over here on the left, you can see all the different resources we currently have available. For example, food, water, various different types of medicine, more raw materials, and so on. This alone should give you an idea that there is a lot that we will be able to produce. I mean, look at construction materials, or better yet, look at food. I'm just going to start scrolling down over here. Still scrolling. Still scrolling. Yep, there's a lot of different production chains, lots of different food goods, and so on. It's pretty darn exciting, if I'm being completely honest. So this will be enough to get people started. Let's also go ahead and set up a quick task, and I'm going to clear out pretty much the entire area around my marketplace, because we know we're going to be using up all of these resources and all of this land. So let's go ahead and gather people up to do that. Now, there are a few different uh, UI tools we'll want to take advantage of. For example, the I key here opens up the town details. And from here, we can see all these different professions and who are currently assigned to each of these roles. There are a lot of professions in this game. Right now, we're only seeing a tiny fragment. There are so very, very many. So this is going to get really, really cumbersome at some point, but it's a really helpful tool to see how many people are currently working, assign people, see how many jobs exist, and so on. We'll also be able to take a look at things like structural overviews, production overviews, seeds, see what we have unlocked, etc, etc. All of this will be useful. For now, let's go ahead and speed up the game. You can go up to 10 times speed, and we'll probably be playing on that speed for most of the game, because it is the most reasonable, in my opinion. A few other things to keep in mind, we do have our happiness and our health for all of our citizens. 
Stress is important. I'm not too sure what happens when people get really stressed. I think it mostly has to do with your fertility rate. Very stressed out people are not going to be producing children. Over here, we can see how many adults, students, and children we already have. The number of temporary workers, which is to say laborers, that are available. And then here's something called development. Over time, we will very slowly ac accumulate development points, which are basically technology points if we hit the T key. So we'll be able to spend these in order to unlock different types of buildings. For example, maybe we want to go ahead and unlock the Research Institute, which is a place where you can get faster development uh, points. That could be good. Or maybe we want to go for something like a sawmill, so we'll be able to get planks and construct more advanced uh, structures, etc. There's a lot of different things that we can do here. Tons of different technologies that we'll have to worry about, but I'll come back to more of that later. Beyond that, we also have silver coins, which will be useful for trade later. We have some temperatures, and we can see how far along we are in the game. And this up here gives you a 20-month foresight as to what's coming, like merchant ships or immigrants, etc., etc. Let's make sure we set up at least a couple more houses. I do want to have enough housing for pretty much everybody. I'm thinking we can start with maybe like seven houses, maybe eight. But after that, we might want to consider getting a boarding house, which does not allow people to have children, but provides a lot of residences for people. A good way to control your population if necessary. Also really good if you have lots of immigration coming in and you're not too sure what to do with it. So we may want to place one of these down at some point in the near future. Let's also go ahead and set up a couple of quick little roads so that people will be able to get around nice and quick because Obviously, the faster people can move around to their different respective jobs, the better things are going to be. And then let's go ahead and start taking a look at some resource production. So first off, we did see that there is going to be a uh, fertile area right over here. If I set up a field in this location right here, it's going to be 11 by 11, which is a bit larger than a standard field would be. But we'll take full advantage of the double production in this area for some extra food. There's also orchards and pastures. If we have any um, animals, we'll be able to set these to pasture and start raising some. In fact, do we actually have any to start? No, we did not start off with any animals. But there's a chance that we will get some if we go hunting. We can worry about that in a little bit, though. Let's take a look at, uh, say, some gathering and stuff. Where do I think I'll place down a lot of trees so I'll be able to get tons of wood. Well, there's going to be some farming locations and stuff over here. So not in this area. Down here, I think I'll develop and get closer to the fish as well as some mines. So I think that over here might be our best option to place down something like a logging camp. We don't want it to be too far away from our main base, but close enough. Close enough. So how about something kind of like this? Actually, that's not quite how I wanted to do this. Uh, I want to make sure that we have a uh, more accessible location as far as roads. So right about here, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set this up, and we can set up a gathering hut next to it, and this should seem very familiar to Banished. If we plant down a lot of trees in this area, uh, we'll be able to have a good, strong, ancient forest with lots of food for us to gather at the gathering station. The hunting cabin, however, is a little bit different from Banished itself. This can be placed pretty much anywhere, and people will start getting some food for you. So I'm going to go ahead and place down a hunting cabin right over here. There we go. Covers the entire map. Yep, hunters go out hunting once per month. And if they can capture some animal cubs, well, there you go. You just found some new animal that you'll be able to domesticate. All right, so this is all looking pretty good so far. Other things we're going to need include something like a big well. Wells are important because this is where people are going to gather all of their water in order to survive. So let's go ahead and place a big one here. You can place down a much smaller one, but the big one allows for two jobs, and I'd rather just go ahead and future-proof a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Let's set up some more roads kind of going off in this direction. Some nice, neat little neighborhoods like so. Now, just like Banished, there will come a point where it's probably better to place houses close-ish to these jobs. So, for example, instead of building everything around the marketplace, maybe I should have placed these down and built some houses over here so that people would quickly get to their jobs. Could do things that way, but I'm going to try being a little bit suboptimal in order to go for something that looks at least a little bit nicer. Fuel reserves are low. Yep, when people are very cold, they're going to need fuel in order to keep themselves nice and warm. We'll need to set up a uh, chopping house, there it is, in order to turn timber into fuel. Or alternatively, if we were to spend some of our research on, let's say, the sawmill, we would be able to get some... Um, some fuel from here. Yeah, here it is. More efficient at making domestic fuel than a chopping house. So, I mean, yeah, if we're going to do that, this might be the way to go. I've got three development points right now. Let's go ahead and buy out the sawmill as one technology. As far as quality of life, let's see. Clean water, sand mining, blah, blah, blah. Police station, don't need that right now. Let's go ahead and research the research institute so I'll be able to get faster points when the time comes. And then beyond that... 
Let's go ahead and just save our points for now, except maybe the warehouse would be very tempting. Mm, I like the idea of getting a warehouse, but I think we'll hold off on that for the moment. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about that too much. Right now, let's just go ahead and gather up as many materials as we can. Now, I do want to get probably some more storage than this. This feels like it's not going to be anywhere near enough. So let's set up an open warehouse, let's say, off in this general vicinity. I think 6x5 is going to be the maximum size for a larger warehouse at some point in the game. So we'll go ahead and do that over there. And then maybe I'll set up another one over here. We'll do 7x5, I guess. Maybe 8x5. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll do something kind of like this. I can always get rid of some of this and place down plenty of decoration later if I feel like I've got some extra space to work with. Other things we'll need to worry about. Well, we do have access to a whole bunch of different services, including things like a church, which increases happiness, but also prevents crime in the area, which is pretty helpful. Clinic for helping to manage people's health. Repair shop is something we're going to need. Buildings will naturally degrade over time. We need to have somebody assigned to go around and repair all the structures and keep them maintained. So this will be important. More builders' cabins, a town hall for immigrants and eventually getting a mayor, schools for our children, and there is the research institute that I was talking about. We don't need to place this yet, but at some point, very soon, we're going to want that to greatly increase our development speed. Down here, we can see some notifications. Fuel reserves are low. Yes, we did get a new crop seed. We discovered peas and I think oats. Pretty sure we had cabbage and pecans before. And then, yeah, we now have an extra point over time. We'll start getting some more. Everything looking okay so far? Everything making sense? It should be. All right, let's see. So we can rotate buildings, 400 coins. Apparently we have a task. I didn't rotate. Uh, yes, I did. Get. Oh, there we go. Now it's saying get two standard fields. Fine, fair enough. Right now we're getting a regular field though. So what do we want to choose to grow here? Well, probably can go ahead and get some cabbage as a simple vegetable. So we'll go ahead and place that down over here. And in order to continue with our quest, I guess it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and place down a couple of standard fields not too far away. Though, I don't know that I really need this right now. It's just it's just going to be an option for us. All right. We have some rain coming in. That's fun. Uh, still waiting on a bit of iron ore to be delivered. Now, we don't have much in the way of iron ore. We should probably gather some. So let's see, over here, this is iron, this little black stuff that looks like coal. This obviously is stone. So let's go ahead and gather all of those up and prioritize that because right now we don't have enough to actually build everything out. And this little icon right here just means that a couple things have to be removed before this can be placed. So some builders or some laborers will come by and get rid of some of these in just a little bit. Other production buildings. Uh, we have tailors, workshops, and blacksmiths. These are going to be very important early on because we will rapidly start running out of tools and clothing. We did already get the sawmill. We could also place down a water sawmill, which is very similar, but a little bit more expensive and has better efficiency, which obviously is really good for me. So I probably will place it down in this area in a little bit. If I want to get more food, I'd love to have the fishing dock next to this. However, you may notice a fishing dock requires 30 planks. So you can't do this until you first have some form of a sawmill. We'll definitely be getting one of those very, very soon. What else we got here? Uh, let's see. I think that covers just about everything that we've currently got unlocked. There are some spectacular, like, wonder buildings. Like, let's say, the Great Castle, or a temple, or some sort of a special shelter. Not going to worry about any of these right now. It's just, it's a thing we could build someday. And I think there are other ones that you can unlock, or maybe the uh, special mode, when you turn on your first game settings, will allow you to have some extra ones, like a Rubik's Cube, or something like that. I don't know. I don't really care too much, though. So over here, let's go ahead and set down some peas. We'll start uh, farming over in this direction. As soon as we have this cleared out, we'll have a few more workers. So food should be mostly cleared out at this point in the game. We'll be fine. But I want to turn off grid lines. No, no, no. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, can you guys please get over here and build this stuff a bit faster? Let's go ahead and start getting some roads, because I feel like that's part of what's hurting me right now. These guys are moving very slowly. Very slowly, indeed. Um, how about right over here, and then we'll do something like this. There we go. The faster people move, just generally speaking, the better your life is going to be. I should have placed this road a little differently, but I guess I'm sort of okay with it. Do something like this. Place these down over here. There we go. Still leaves plenty of space to work with. And let's see. Right now, we are still in the middle of month six, so we're in good old summertime. That's not much time before winter, honestly. The game kind of does progress really fast. Let's go ahead and clear some stuff over here. I know once we clear this area out, we should get a free seed, and I'd like to find out what that extra seed is going to be. 
So over here we have our gathering station. Uh, apparently we don't have any available laborers though, so that's going to be part of a problem. Let's go ahead and turn off a couple of jobs over here. And I'm specifically only going to be planting trees in this area, so one worker here should be fine. And let's go ahead and assign someone here to start gathering up some extra food. I assume extra food diversity is going to make people a little bit happier. Could be wrong on that point, I'm just sort of assuming that that's the case. Let's go ahead and pull back on one of our builders, because right now, without any laborers, that does make my life a little bit harder. And yeah, we have kind of too many people working in the farms. Let's go ahead and reduce that a little bit. Over here, we can start placing down some oats, which apparently counts as a staple food. Can be used for a brewery. You know what? I don't have any of that really available yet. Maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Let's instead go for... Yeah, let's go for peas instead. We'll just double up on peas for the moment. And when I have a brewery and stuff, then we'll start worrying about getting some oats. And I think that's going to be the way to go. So it gives me a couple of extra citizens to work with. Now, of course, children do grow up and become adults, which adds to the labor pool. We will want to have plenty of births in order to keep this going. Getting a school researched and built up will make you an educated populace, which just makes them more effective. Let's go ahead and get another 700 coins for finishing up this mission. Now it says to close a field. I guess we'll go ahead and close this like so in order to go ahead and clear this out, get 400 coins, and we've already built a big well, and we've already built a logging house, and we've already built a gathering station, and a hunting cabin. The only thing I'm missing now is a chopping house. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on and let people get to work. So a chopping house, I guess I could build temporarily, but it's not really what I want. Not, not really. Let's go ahead and, actually, you know what I wanna do? I wanna place down another, I wanna place down another logging camp, but this one actually will be intended for the purpose of getting me some extra wood. So yeah, let's go ahead and place you over here. And I guess it's okay to place a chopping house nearby, and then probably another storage yard nearby so we'll be able to quickly place some wood as well as some fuel. So six by five over here will do just fine, thank you. Don't have a lot of workers to work with though, that's the only real problem. I'd love to place down a whole load more jobs, but not sure that's going to be great. Let's pull back a little bit on the peas. One less farmer each. I'll go ahead and try to go as much as I can, but yeah, this is going to be providing me a ton of food by the end of this. A new crop uh, seed has been discovered. We now have access to flax. Well, that could be very useful at some point. Absolutely. We might use that to try and get some sort of a clothing material or other form of textile. We also have some extra development points. Okay, what else would we like to get? Well, wouldn't be a bad idea to get school expansions. Grocery stores, don't need that yet. Um, stone pit, blah, blah, blah. There's so much we're going to need to get in this game. So very much. Material recycling means that whenever we do dismantle a building, we will get all of the raw materials back. So we probably should go ahead and get this just to make sure we don't have any major problems. Uh, let's see. Not going to worry about construction techniques. Reeds, compost, feed mill. Hmm... Processing? Not gonna worry about that yet either. Let's go ahead and unlock the regular warehouse. Just so I have something that's a little bit better than, you know, a simple open uh, storage area. Though we will be able to place down something a little bit better using some stone. Baskets? Workshops can make baskets. Huh. Knitting workshops. Interesting. Carrying capacity. Gosh, there's so much we can do here. Small marketplaces? Eh, not gonna worry about that right now. Let's just keep moving forward. We can build a ferry. And a ferry is where the merchants will come by in order to trade things. We have 3,100 silver coins right now, which is what you use in order to uh, buy something from the merchant. And one is on its way in a few seasons, uh, but we're not going to worry about that yet. Time for the autumn harvest. We are well on top of that. I do think these peas are going nowhere. No one has been growing anything over here, so let's just go ahead and turn that off for the moment. And I'll go ahead and attach someone else to this pea farm just to make sure that we do harvest this nice and quick. I'm actually wondering if we want to go ahead and get another farmer over here, the cabbage. I have no idea if there's enough time to harvest all of this. I'm kind of assuming that there is. But what if there's not? Ugh, gosh, then I would feel like a fool. Now, in these storage yards, you can control what is being placed here. So, for example, we can say we don't want any food or water. Now, I mean, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that, but we could. Let's say we don't want water stored here. Why would water be stored over here? That doesn't make any sense. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. What about things like ore? No reason to have ore over here. What about clothing or trading goods? Don't need any of that. Industrial fuels? No. Right, so we'll go ahead and start clearing a lot of that out and bring it closer to the center of town where it will be more useful. Now, I did just see that someone has been injured. So a clinic is something we would probably like to get sometime soon, maybe right now. Uh, can't quite fit you here, but I could. No, I can't fit you here either. Darn it. Um, all right. Well, 
let me think for a second. Let's let's try to plan out a little bit. If I place down, let's say, a church over here, it's a pretty good spot, but I can pause it so we don't have to build it right now. Followed up by a clinic probably right behind it. This should be able to take care of most people. Although, where do I think most of my housing is going to go? Nah, this seems like a reasonable enough location. Yeah, let's go ahead and place this right over here. Okay, so we'll have a clinic, and I'm going to go ahead and start building this now, because I think having a doctor makes a lot of sense. A cemetery is something we are probably going to need. Uh, we'll place it, like, over here, I guess? Sure. But not a high priority, because it takes a lot of wood and a lot of stone, and no one's dead yet, and I'm hoping no one's going to die anytime soon. A research lab would be very tempting to me, because I'd love to start getting some extra development points going early rather than later. So let's go ahead and place that down over here, but I'll pause that for the moment. And then we can start planning out things like a boarding house. Now, this is obviously a very large structure, right? Uh, we can place you probably over here. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and pause that for the moment. And then we don't have anyone who's homeless, I don't think. So, how do we want to do this? I guess we place a couple of houses off in this direction. Let's just say one for now. Um... I don't see any evidence that anyone is homeless, so we can ignore this for the moment here, too. So what's going on over here in the chopping house? Ah, okay, so people are now working over here. We need to choose a recipe, and specifically, I want to turn timber into domestic fuel. Although, if we had lots of pastures, we could turn dried animal dung into fuel as well. But for right now, no, it makes a lot more sense to go ahead and work on that with the chopping house. In this warehouse here, I don't want any food, or water, medicine to be stored over here. Uh, no ore, clothing, traded goods. We'll allow for fuels and lumber to be dropped off over here, and that's kind of it. All right. Now, unfortunately, the uh, marketplace, I think, is a little bit too far away from this, so I'm wondering if this actually was a bad idea. Does this mean that people aren't going to be able to wander over here and gather stuff? I'm not sure that's quite how it works. Maybe it is. We are in uh, mid-autumn, so pretty soon it's going to be getting very cold over here. In fact, it's already 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below freezing. So, yeah, all the more reason that we really, really need to get some fuel going pretty darn soon here. Uh, let's see, fuel, we can see here that there is no fuel, so yeah, the sooner we can produce this, probably the better. By the way, if you are looking to simplify your UI and you wanted to track, let's say, one specific resource, for example, potatoes, you could click this button right here, and instead of showing all of your raw food, it just shows the potatoes. That's kind of cool, right? Or we could just go ahead and say all raw food like that. Cool, right? Chopping house, we have. Houses in total, we've got. Repair shop. That is something that we do need to build, and I almost forgot about that. Thank you, game. Let's go to services and place down this repair shop. And actually, I guess we can go ahead and get rid of this house over here. This repair shop would make a lot of sense in this location. So we'll go ahead and do something like this. There we go. So go ahead and build up the clinic first. I do want to take care of the broken bones. This person apparently is suffering right now. Ankles are sprained, so we have slow movement. Yeah, we'll fix that soon enough. But once again, I'm having some issues as far as some uh, workers. Let's go ahead and pull back a little bit. Um, probably just turn off both of these pea fields for now. And we'll pull back on you and get a few extra workers freed up. There we go. All right, so someone should automatically go and work at the clinic, which is what's happening right now. So someone will be getting treated. Very good. Very good. Uh, we can see how much uh, fuel has been produced right now. We have produced 20 so far. It does give you some idea of what you produced last year to get an idea of what you are more effect um, efficient this year or less efficient, etc., etc. So let's see. We are now building up the repair shop. This will make sure we keep all of our buildings maintained. Uh, I don't know if there's a icon somewhere that says that it's not being maintained and if it's falling apart, but regardless, simply having this will solve that problem. So there we go. We have the repair shop. A church is the next thing that the game is recommending. We'll take a lot of timber. We'll take a lot of stone and so on, but all right, let's go ahead and start constructing that now. I will probably want to clear out some additional resources. So maybe out over this way, for example, clear out some of the extra stone and stuff. Sure. I assume we want to leave that pasture alone. I will clear out some more resources over here, over here, and where's some more stone? Uh, looks like there's some stone over here. I assume that's stone and not iron, but all right, we'll go ahead and do that. So yeah, you can build it in services. Now here's one of the things that's so cool about a lot of the UIs. Like, it, it doesn't just tell you build a church. It tells you where you can find it, exactly what it does, why that sort of thing is useful. That's also going to be really useful when we go to things like, let's say, technology. Clean water, here's what it does. Unlocks the reservoir, here's what the reservoir is, here's how much it's going to cost. Like, the UI is just brilliant in this game. There is so much information being provided in a non-cumbersome way. Like, I, I don't know, I have to appreciate the beauty of it. 
I've been playing enough games to know that putting together a good intuitive UI that really gives enough information without being cumbersome is kind of difficult, but there we go. What's wrong with you? You have no place to work. Uh, right, because the farms are off. Tell you what, turn these off. There we go. Go find jobs. Be a generic laborer for the moment. That will be just fine. Thank you. All right, let's see. Um, so we'll be planting a lot of trees in this area and then harvesting everything we can. These guys are going to create effectively an ancient forest. So we just want to expand a little bit further as far as some houses. A citizen wants a new house. I think what that's trying to tell me is basically my population is expanding. And now that we people are becoming adults, they'd like to have a place to set up their own family. And you know what? Fair enough. Let's go ahead and place down at least one more house over in this direction. And we'll want to continue expanding that in due time. For the moment, though, we can ignore the rest. Let's go ahead and place you here, place you up over here. That's not what I wanted to do, so we should be able to demolish road like that. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, church is almost done. We do have another development point we'll be able to use. And this is going to go a lot faster once I have researchers, trust me. So somebody is going to work in the church as a cleric. Okay, fair enough. Let's go ahead and place out some more roads like this. Get our coins. There we go. Build a clinic. Done. A distillery. Now, this is something I don't think that I need right now. A distillery is going to create spirits using either potatoes or agave tequila. Do I have either of those? I don't believe that I do. Nope. So we could place down as a distillery, but it's kind of useless to me. So I'm not sure why I would want to do that. Uh, but you know what? Aside from the fact that it says to. Um, we should probably go ahead and set up a ferry because it would be nice to be able to start trading away some of our excess goods if we have any. Uh, we have plenty of silver coins, so to me it just makes sense to do this. Let's go ahead and place down a ferry. I'll pause it for the moment, though. Let's also place down a water sawmill. This is something we said we wanted to get. I didn't need it right away because I already was getting a chopping house, but now we might as well. So sure, let's go ahead and place you here. And once we have some planks going, we'll be able to get some mo more food sources by placing down the fishing dock. Though right now, it looks like our food is mostly doing all right. Let's go ahead and turn back on the fields. I think this cabbage alone will be okay, plus the gathering hut, plus the hunter's hut. We should be fine on food for at least a bit. Why are people here not getting sufficiently treated? There's so many injuries. You're all spraining your ankles. Come on. Be careful. Gosh, dang. In these day and age, if you twist your ankle at the wrong time, you die. That's, that's how it works. Come on. Eh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, yeah, plenty of food being brought up over here. We do have some agave tequila. All right, fair enough. We are actually discovering agave tequila with our gatherers. Maybe we could go ahead and place down a distillery. Hmm, still don't think it's a very good investment, but I mean, all right. Sure, I suppose. We'll place you probably right up over here. I like to keep a lot of my production buildings close to some of the local storage because I know that I want to make sure people have access to their goods right away. We could place down one of these larger uh, warehouses I was talking about, by the way. It does fit right over here. Um, we'll worry about that later when I'm getting a little bit closer on some of my storage capacity. But yeah, at some point we can go ahead and get rid of the open storage in favor of that. So we're planting down a whole load of cabbage. Looking good. We are almost done building up our water sawmill. Just need to have a few builders working over here. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a priority because I want people to work over here fast. And we only have one job left over. That's the problem with this. We still are not growing our population quite fast enough. One reason to keep the stress manageable, right? So that people can have plenty of babies and we just have to wait for a few seasons and get them to grow up. Because obviously in this game, people grow at uh, ridiculous superhuman rates. I don't know how long it takes exactly. It's like a year or something like that. All right, so here's our water sawmill. Now the water sawmill is useless to me until we first choose a recipe. And once again, you see fuel. Oh, well, where's the planks? Here they are, building materials. Click on this, timber, planks, done deal. All right, so now someone will be able to make use of this. We'll get some planks. With some planks taken care of, let's go ahead and place down a fishing dock and I'll place it right next uh, nearby. Uh, water area, obviously you wanna have as much water area as possible. 55% over here, but I wanna keep it in range of these fish. Believe it or not, Kind of close to the sawmill is actually going to be the best bet for me. All right. We'll go ahead and place it right over there then. That seems fine. And this will be worth a lot of food for me. All right. Very good. We're making some solid progress already. We have access to several services. We've expanded pretty aggressively already. But I think we're going to end this video here. Like I said, this is going to end up being a series for us. Let's go ahead and set this to agave, by the way. 
This is going to be a series, so I plan on continuing with this for a while. And as far as a name, why don't we go ahead and call it Darby Hillmontashire? Why not? I haven't used that in this game yet, because obviously I haven't played it yet, and it is going to be a classic one for us. So, welcome to Darby Hill Montashire. Let's see how well we can develop this new city. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and you're looking forward to this series. If so, I would humbly ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.